Fear and Hunger 2 is a turn-based JRPG that has horror and survival gameplay elements, hence the name of the franchise. If you ever played any of the two games yourself, you would know how unforgiving and challenging it could be to get through them, especially as a new player. The game punishes you for your mistakes, which usually results in death and a restart from the last save. What makes this game amazing, however, instead of other hardcore survival games that are difficult for the sake of being difficult, is the writing and storytelling that is placed in front of the player. Each decision, each dialogue option, and each interaction acts as a small puzzle piece to a larger plot taking place. It's what drives us to continue playing and explore the next areas. The game doesn't hold your hand, and instead you're forced to figure things out on your own, trial and error style. There's been a, there's been a small following for this game that is slowly growing, but there's not a whole lot of content out there explaining what's going on story-wise. So, for this video, I'll try my absolute best using what I gathered from my three playthroughs to explain the story of Termina and the multiple endings. There will be massive spoilers ahead, so please, if you haven't played the game, I highly suggest you try it. It's only like $12 on Steam. Also, I want to thank everyone for showing support for my latest video. I gained like 100 new subscribers because of it, and I really, really appreciate that. A lot of y'all have been wanting me to dive into lore, so uh... This is really my first attempt, so let's let's do this. Before we get started, I think it's important to set the backstory before anyone gets confused. There's a lot going on in this game, so I think we should get a few things out of the way. The game takes place during an alternate universe of the Great Wars and is a sequel to the original Fear and Hunger game, which was set way before the events of the second. In Termina, the Bremen and Eastern Union Army have been fighting and Kaser, the leader of the Bremen Army, moved to take over Previl. Previl was known as a city in which its citizens worshipped the gods and was always seen as mysterious and sinister. Fear and Hunger 2 starts with the player choosing one of eight characters who are Levi, Abella, Marina, Dan, Olivia, Osa, Marco, and Karen. I've heard that in the future the creator wants to add more playable characters, but for now, there's only 8. After choosing, the game starts with the character backstory, which basically allows you to start with certain perks and items. I'm not going to get into each character's backstory right now, I really want to make separate videos explaining each of their backstories and their individual character arcs, so if you would like to see that, please let me know by liking this video and subscribing if you aren't already. After all, it's free and you can always unsubscribe later. After the character backstory, the player enters the intro sequence where we see a girl with red shoes, blue butterflies, and learn more about the exposition and festival of Termina. Perkeli, a servant of the moon god Rare, yeah, it's pronounced Perkeli, uh, according to Google Translate, tells the player that you and 13 other people arrived in Preval, and there can only be one winner. The 14 contestants are Abella, Dan, Karen, Levi, Marco, Marina, Olivia, Osa, Tan Tanika, Henrik, Samiri, Pav, Kaligura, and August. Holy shit. Okay. The winner of this festival will have the opportunity to have a, have a peak at Grandier and have a chance for illustrious reality. Perkeli calls the festival of Termina the festival to end all festivals, and after this he informs the player that their goal is to head to the moon tower in the inner city, where he will answer all of the player's questions. It's implied by Perkeli that the winner can only be the last surviving contestant. After waking up, the player finds that the train has stopped and the remaining passengers are discussing what's going on. From here, the player gets to meet each of the seven other characters that were also on the train. It turns out that everyone on the train had the exact same dream and were informed of the festival. A few of them, including Karen, a journalist, suggests investigating the city as she suspects the Bremen army is up to no good. The player is shown that there are two different story arcs to follow. Either continue with what Perkeli said and just head to the moon tower, or investigate and try to figure out what's going on within the city. Both of which, of course, require the player to progress through the city. Who could have guessed? <laughs> As you make your way to the city, you along with the other NPCs discover that the small village is in complete disarray and its citizens are horrifically disfigured and insane. Some of them even immediately attack on sight. The citizens of the village barricaded themselves inside their homes, and the players informed that the mayor locked the inner city gates. How you get the two keys to open the gates, or get into the inner city itself, 
is completely up to you and the decisions you made beforehand. One key is in Tunnel 7, west of the Woodsman's House, where you will encounter Needles and Tanika and Abella. The other is found on the Mayor. There's also the Sewer Key, which Pav has a chance to give you, depending on the choice that you made, after you go through all of Tunnel 7. Here, the player finds a few pieces of information. The Trickster God Rare hosts his festival and the citizens are affected by the green hue of the moon, causing them to go insane and disfigure. In Tunnel 7, it is discovered that a secret project was taken place by the Eastern Union and Kaser wanted to seize control over it, which is why he moved his army into the city. There are two other tunnels that the player can find that are crucial to starting up this secret project by turning on the telectroscopes. I think that's how you say it. Turning on all three will result in a secret door opening in the museum, leading to one of the three endings. In order to reach the museum and the moon tower, the player must find three effigies. One is located in the orphanage, another is located in the moldy apartments, and the last is located in the church basement. Placing the three effigies on the church altars reveals the entrance to the middle of the city, where the player can stand before the door of the moon tower. I should note that if players decide to follow the moon tower progression, unfortunately, you'll have to kill all other NPCs in order to actually ascend the tower. By going the moon tower route, or by progressing the game time, it's discovered that the green hue also affects the contestants as well. By night 3, every NPC that is still alive will transform into a disfigured being, based off their soul. If you decide to sleep through night 3, or stay out in the dark too long, you transform, and you die, and the game ends. So, do with that information whatever you please. There are two in-game locations, the White Bunker and the Moon Tower. The White Bunker is what the three telectroscopes opened underneath the museum and what the Bremen army and Kaser were looking for. Reaching the end of the bunker transports you directly in front of the Hall of the Gods and then immediately it transports you right next to Kaser. It's revealed that Kaser is actually Lagarde from the original game, who has reached new god status. He informs the player that although he was the prophesized god, he's not the one that'll bring salvation to humanity. He states that the cycle between new gods is just a scheme by the old gods, and Kaser intends to break the cycle by creating a new god. This new god, of course, is the logic, the machine god. The player then defeats both Kaser and Logic the Machine God, where after the player and everyone else in your party joins the artificial green who and the game just ends, saving all other surviving contestants and you see the girl in the little picture who ends up being the girl with the red shoes and that's that's it. Uh, this is also known as ending A. The other two endings depend on the dialogue options when speaking to Perkelly again after reaching the moon tower. Perkelly reveals to you that the moon god, the trickster god Rare, is actually long gone and that he serves a new god, the sulfur god. Perkelly asks you to join their ranks as you are now the winner of the festival. You can either decide to join him or decline, both of which will require you to defeat Perkelly in battle. If you decide not to join the sulfur god, you will also fight the moon god itself. Beating the moon, which sounds absurd, Will, will result in you, the only soul who survived, the ability to leave Preevil and move on with your life. Each character has their own ending as they're the only survivor, and this is known as ending B. Ending C requires you to join the Sulphur God, where you get this weird cutscene and the game just ends. That's it. No explanation. Now, that's the whole story from start to finish, but what does it all mean? So, time out. In order to answer this, we have to discuss the old and new gods. So get your, pa get your paper and pens out because we're going to theology class, guys. The old gods are primordial beings that came to Earth way before humanity began. As in making this video, the old gods are Rare, Sylvian, Grogoroth, Venushka, Almer, and the god of fear and hunger. So let's start with Rare. As mentioned before, Rare is the trickster god or moon god. According to the book that we find in the game, he's, he's depicted as the god of the insane who've succumbed to madness. 
The book says that his blessing is his moonlight, which uncovers the truth under human filth. That explains the term moon scorched and how people in the town are insane. Rare is said to be the one behind the festival of Termina, and no one really knows his role in the greater scheme of things. Sylvian is the goddess of lust, love, and creation. The Skin Bible of Sylvian says that her love of humanity became obsessive and controlling, especially after she realized that humanity can never love her back the same. Sylvian is the reason for the sex bunnies in the original game, and the reason of, for the disappearance and deaths of Dan's parents, who worshipped her. She also is closely associated with Grogoroth, who she had an offspring with, which is Vanushka. The Destroyer of Man and the God of Destruction as a whole, Grogoroth ushers a new dawn with force and violence. While Sylvian was creation, Grogoroth is destruction or death. Sylvian and Grogoroth represent the cycle of life and death and the idea of the forest fire. The forest fire, while destructive, is necessary to bring new life and restart the cycle. His skin bible hints that he is the god of chaos and change. The offspring of Grogoroth and Silverin is Venushka, the god of nature. Venushka plays a role in weather, like actual weather, and how imbalanced and unpredictable it can be. His skin bible states that he is a representation of humanity, as they are both made from Sylvian, and that Almer and Venushka are considered equal. Almer Almer's skin bible states that he is one of two known human-born gods. Almer, in Fear and Hunger, is basically the messiah, with the exception that there are two origin stories, one of which follows the story of Jesus and how after the crucifixion, Almer came and ended new god worship, and the other version states that Almer was created by Sylvian to be the perfect to be the perfect human, resembling herself. Both stories have different interpretations, the first being that a human can actually ascend and reach and rival the power of the old gods, while the other states that Almer is just another creation by the old gods. Basically, one of them says that Almer is able to, like humans are able to ascend and have power, and the other one says that Almer is just like a puppet. The God of Fear and Hunger The last known old god is the God of Fear and Hunger, who was also a human before she ascended to godlike status. An offspring of a chosen human and a false god created the eventual god of fear and hunger. As the forgotten god of the depths died, the god of fear and hunger began to grow. The false deity hopped, hoped that her- What the fuck? What did I write? The false deity hoped that her daughter would be the light of mankind, where she was born as a blank slate in the deepest pits of human creation, where she grew up. Because of the pain and suffering she faced, she was able to ascend to godlike status, being a representation of hope for humanity. The Skin Bible reads that fear motivates people while hunger keeps them moving forward. What followed after her creation was an advancement of mankind into a new age. Okay, I know that was a lot, but trust me, the New Gods overview is going to be much faster. Just, just stick with me. The New Gods. From what I understand about the first game, the Old Gods left Earth and many of the kingdoms started to rot away. A group of people set off to find the ancient city where humanity can meet and talk to its maker. This group of people demanded that they have the right to self-govern mankind, which the Old Gods allowed. What the group did not know, however, except for one person known as the Forgotten One, is that the old gods had actually been controlling the flow of mankind and that there had been many groups of people before who ascended, going through the same obstacles and same trials and the same gauntlet and everything like that. There had been many new gods before, and when their time ends, they just reside in the Hall of the Gods, ruling the ancient city. Okay, so how does this all tie into the second game and the gods and all that stuff? Finally, guys, finally. Here is an explanation of Termina. Alright, so strap yourselves in, get ready. 
The whole cycle of new gods ascending is very similar to Dark Souls and Linking the Fire, in my opinion. If you haven't played Dark Souls, go play the game. There's tons of lore videos out there, but in my opinion, it's the same kind of thing. The old gods are the ones that are actually in control, and they use the new gods to perform their acts. It's all a continuous cycle. New gods come, think, think that they're going to save the world, and their time ends and someone else just takes their place. The cycle is repeating and nothing ever gets done, and there's no progress towards saving humanity. So how does this relate to the second game in the festival? Well, deep breath. Rare does come back to Earth and performs tricks and games and stuff like that, but Perkelly reveals at the second meeting at the Moon Tower that he actually worships the Sulphur God, which is the god of darkness and chaos, basically Satan. The festival of Termina is set in order to find the best candidate to join the ranks of Satan through killing and bloodshed. So at the very beginning of the game, many of the NPCs are actually kind of right, and much of the dialogue makes sense. Basically, Satan is coming to Earth, and the festival is just a sick trick to sacrifice people. This can also be inferred by the backstory of Dan's character, whose wife is supposedly killed and sacrificed by the cult. Kaser comes to Preville and realizes that he isn't the one to save humanity. It's it's not really sure if he knew that when he came, or before he came, or whatever, but he realizes that he is just a puppet and the cycle will continue once his time is up. So Kaser and the Bremen army start to make a new god. This new god, in the eyes of Kaser, rivals that of the old gods, but actually provides salvation to humanity. The birth of the new god also implies a birth of a new age, which, in my opinion, I think I interpret that as computers and AI. In my opinion, ending A, the Machine God ending, is the good ending. Everyone is saved, the Moon Scorch is, re is reversed from what we know from the ending slides, and humanity reaches a new era with a new god. This is also, in my opinion, the best ending for the player, since he literally reaches the artificial green hue, hue, whatever, which I interpret as like heaven or salvation. That's kind of what I got from it. As for the other two endings, they're much more character focused. Depending on the character you choose, the endings vary since the Moon Tower as a whole is more of like a personal journey. Considering that the character you choose is also the last remaining survivor, it implies that the ending you're going to get is much more character focused. I see ending B, the fourth day, as the game's normal ending. The entire game, you're told to go to the Moon Tower, to head to the Moon Tower, to enter the Moon Tower, and every single NPC you meet tells you to go to the Moon Tower and win the festival. In my eyes, that makes this the most common ending, while ending A is more of like a secret ending, so to speak. No one really tells you to turn on the telescopes or telescopes or whatever, and you just kind of like figure it out on your own. The last ending, ending C, is of course you just getting to meet the Sulphur God and joining the cult. Like I said earlier, I interpret this as the player either being sacrificed to Satan or possibly becoming a servant like Berkeley. If you were to ask me which of the endings I think are canon, I really couldn't tell you. But if I were to guess, I'd probably say ending A, because it, it just kind of makes the most sense if it were to be canon. On the contrary, I really want ending B to be canon, because the idea of having the characters walk away from the events and surviving it and living through it, not really answering any of the questions, if anything, asking more questions, I think is pretty interesting. Endings like Dan's and Levi's and Marco's are pretty dark, but like really, really cool. I don't think ending C is canon since there's not a whole lot of information, but I think the game hints that the Sulphur God is going to emerge in the next game. But yeah, I know I skipped through a lot of stuff over the video, so if you have anything you want to add, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, this game is a lot of fun and the lore is super cool to look into. And I plan to make more videos going into each of the characters and their related story arcs, or character arcs, so to speak. <clears throat> Mainly following ending B, because like ending A is always going to be the same, and ending C is always the same. So again, if you haven't played this game yet, I don't know why you're watching this, but you totally should. It's one of the better new games I've played recently, and um, it, it's, it's a pretty nice, gnarly sick dark game but that's really all i have so i'll see you